Well, it, it's not working in prod. Indeed, it's not working in prod. Well, it's not my problem. It works just fine on my machine and on the dev server. Well? Well, I told you all systems are ISOs. And if it's working in dev, it's working in prod. It's ISO? Oh, yeah. Essentially, I mean, pretty much almost. Almost? What do you mean, almost? Uh, you know, there's maybe a very small gap in minor versions. And for some plugins. Nothing particularly important. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Docker Live show. So glad everybody's here. We got an awesome guest with us today, Marcos. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thanks, Peter. It's great to be here. <laughs> yeah, this is this has been a long time coming, right? We've uh, we've been playing this for a while. I'm, I'm I'm glad we're finally here. Had a little winter storm. Something happened here in Texas with some snow. We don't we don't see that very often down here, but. Yeah, that's crazy. Is is that the like the first time ever that Texas has had something like that happen? I think in '89, uh, we we get snow, of course, every once in a while here in Austin. Dallas isn't isn't as fortunate as us, but um, back in '89, we had a pretty bad storm. But then yeah. I've heard that um, about 120 years ago is actually the we beat that record back then of 120 years ago for the the amount of time that it was in the zeros or the teens or something like that yeah so it was this is a it was a once in a 120 year storm so pretty crazy oh my gosh when you moved down from pittsburgh did you bring your shovel no no we don't have uh <laughs> we don't have shovels here i didn't even i don't even have a winter jacket uh, we had to dig through you know get gloves and oh my goodness stuff. yeah i yeah, know yeah. definitely our hearts go to you guys i mean in Canada, you know, we're we're prepared for things like that, but in places in the world where you're not, it's it's tough. And so, yeah, it's insane. But but, so yeah, glad that we could accommodate here now. Yeah, yeah, glad we're back. Glad we got a chance that schedules lined up and we have you on. Well, let me let me introduce you a little bit. So Marcos is coming from MedStack. So uh, what what's your title over at MedStack to be exact? Product manager. I told you I was going to yeah. go off script. You're like, you're going off script already. So. <laughs> yeah, here's the script. Then there, there we go. There we go. Yeah, we have a so plan. Of, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So academic background in engineering. Practice a little bit as an engineer. And then you had some startups. And in your bio, when I was reading, you said you had uh, successfully failed one startup at least. And then you ended up moving to Vancouver and finding MedStack and joining that team. But yeah, so... A fa a successfully failed. I love that. I love that. Uh, yeah. And, and really, that's the only way to look at it, it as far as I see it. Um, so like, yeah, that, that background in engineering took me down to a, a course in my career where I figured I was probably going to go into uh, maybe like applications, engineering, sales, uh, and maybe a path into marketing or something like that. Yeah. But uh, along that journey, there was just too much of a force, some fire burning inside of me that like, I need to go and like, and, and execute this startup. And so uh, a co-founder and I, we started a company called City Connect. And the, the idea was to get people to connect with their communities and discover events going on in their cities, mostly because, you know, in Calgary, there's more boring things going on than exciting things, but <laughs> those exciting things are going on. You just got to find out where they are. And, 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 you know, everyone has a friend who knows what that might right. be. Right, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we created this platform and uh, I even had the opportunity to reach out to Paul Graham by email. And oh, cool. uh, I was like, yeah, uh, I asked him, uh, I was like, why do you think? Because it was really funny because he called this out. It says every year we get like hundreds of people that apply in the cohorts for event-based apps. And oh, wow. uh, we turned down pretty much all of them. And I was like, why do you, why do you turn them down? And uh, he responds back saying, well, founders think that they know what people want to see. Right. Uh, and what people want to do, but that it's just, it's skewed. It's all over the map and it's hard to really drive, uh, drive a product that hinges on delivering that consistently to users. So like, like a dumb founder, I ignored that advice and continued a long track with this, <laughs> trying to figure something out. Uh, yeah. it was constantly like, oh, we're in beta. I'm not going to share it and open it up to our friends yet. We're not ready. And just like, just made all these classic mistakes that it needed to be perfect before it was launched. Yeah. But Really, it, it, it never uh, ended up having this success trajectory. It had just a, a handful of users. 
And uh, it was just such a, an awesome experience to learn about what it means to actually get something into the hands of users like early and validate it quickly. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, one of the sayings I I have for my kids and myself not as much because I you know usually don't you get old and don't listen to your own advice. But anyways, um, is you know there's only there's no losing right. There's only learning and winning. And I know that sounds clicheish and kind of you know it sucks when you're winning or you're not you know you have a failed business right. It sucks of course. Yeah. But really, I mean, what else are you going to do? Just sit in the room in a dark room and drink yourself uh to, 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 to <laughs> but, uh, you know maybe but yeah. <laughs> really it's like you know find the learnings and and just keep grinding right i don't i don't think i've met anybody that i thought was really successful that did, that did not fail three or four times right wow that's our, awesome yeah and our yeah. media is very you know overnight success oh well it was a it was a 10 10 year overnight success right? yeah well and so that that's a huge part of this is that like for those of you who are listening and who are founders yourselves or have attempted who have attempted to start up like you get your friends and your family and they're gassing you up you know they're telling you they're like oh you know you're the next steve jobs marcus right. Pliny, steve jobs you know bill <laughs> belichick marcus Pliny. You know? <laughs> you're right yeah yeah, I'm like, no, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. But it, it, there's a little bit of you that kind of gets like pumped up and gassed by that. Uh, and it's fun to have that motivation. But you you can't think that, you know, your your first bat out of it or your first bat in the cage is going to be the one that that's a home run, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're just going to learn. Right. And and yeah. And, and you also have to learn to to um, kill your darlings. Right. I think it's more of a fictional term that I hear a lot. You know, you write, you write some prose. You could see I do some really horrible fiction writing. Um, but you write something, you're like, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world. And then it, it doesn't fit in your story, but it's so, oh, it's so wonderfully written. And it's like, you, you have to kill it. Just kill it, get it out of here, right? It's like sometimes, you know, you build something and you have to get it perfect. You don't want to show anybody and you wait and wait and wait and wait. And then he shows somebody and you're like, Oh, well, you know, and you're like, well, there goes my whole, my whole life is done. I should just quit. <laughs> <laughs> but the earlier you get that in front of somebody and get some good feedback and, you know, get a little fix. Totally. Skin, like, so, totally have, have, you, have you gone through that in, in your career, Peter, where like you had a startup attempt or, so, or something like that? We had, a, I had a custom development shop before I came to Docker and we learned a ton and ultimately I would say failed, but you know, we weren't software, we weren't sales folks, right? Sales and marketing, right? We were just engineers that that had people started coming to us and asking for things to be built, right? And we built things and and then referrals and folks we knew, right? And But that sh quickly runs out and you realize, oh yeah, all those guys, I'm gonna offend any salespeople on the call here, please, I don't mean to offend, it's all in love. But yeah, oh, the, oh, all those guys over the, the nice, you know, wear collars and nice shiny shirts and bring donuts to the office, you know, they're, they're very important, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I better put know. this thing down. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's super important, right? And we totally miss that. And by the time we caught up to that of building up our funnel and trying to, you know, in sales lead, uh, the sales cycle was so long um, that we didn't anticipate that. Yeah. And just totally, you know, yeah. skyrocketed tons of revenue and then, oh, you know, contracts have went away and we didn't have any new in the pipeline and just, you know, trying to make payroll and all those type of things is, is really fun. Oh, but that's crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, in that startup world, uh, one thing that we've had to go through the journey of at MedSec was like decreasing the, the time uh, in the sales funnel as well. And that's yeah. by like making a stronger onboarding experience. And when you're doing like services, uh, it's really hard to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell me about MedStack. So in your bio, you talked a little about you saw a talk that the founder maybe gave, and how'd you get into that space? What triggered you? You know, what what was what was interesting? What did you see? Yeah, yeah. Uh, th this was such an awesome experience. So, uh, as a founder with zero income and basically like ten grand in savings that I was using for just paying rent and eating, I <laughs> scoured like four hundred dollars and said. I'm going to go to this new conference that's going on in Waterloo. It, it should be a pretty cool new tech conference called True North. And okay. uh, I think it was 2018 that was the first one. I went and had an incredible time, met some awesome people, and basically vowed that the next year I would go, regardless of my situation. And um, 
2019 rolls around and I'm there at, at True North again. And one of the talks is around uh, healthcare and the, the boundaries, the barrier to entry in getting into, into the digital health space and what kind of challenges people experience in doing that. You think about as founder, as a founder, and you know someone who knows other founders, we want to make really incredible solutions to solve problems that are very real. And you know, making healthcare public, available uh, to the masses at scale is is really tough, especially when there's yeah. so many different niche things. You know, even something so simple as seeing a counselor, you still have to go a long ways out of your way to 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 make that happen. And now, like you know, being able to see a counselor online is just like easy. Um, yeah. So, so the, the innovation in that space, I thought was super cool. And it was going to see this talk, our, our CEO, Balaji, uh, he was presenting basically, this is before I worked at MedSec, of course, he was presenting about this and said something insane, like every year, the, f the amount of fines that are issued by HIPAA, HIPAA is like the, uh, the, governing, the governing standard of, of handling uh, patient information. Right. And the amount of fines are just like going up, so like their step functions year after year. And so people are building apps, but they're not following these, uh, these requirements for running in digital health. And so he presented MedStack as a solution to that and making it so easy that you could literally just bring your existing applications and run them on MedStack and be able to get past a lot of those HIPAA impediments. Yeah. I was like, that's, that's brilliant. So I basically followed MedStack, followed Balaji on AngelList and, uh, and on LinkedIn and was like, hey, you know, I see you guys are you know, starting to look for a product manager. Just serendipitously, the timing was perfect. And wow. uh, I hounded on him, be like, you got to hire me. Like, this is the role. Uh, I, I totally need to be here. And uh, sure enough, that happened. And you know, I think that was about a year and a half ago where we find ourselves today on the Docker podcast. There awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a couple of years back, I was in the uh, EMR space, the electronic medical records space. Yeah. yeah. And so I learned a little bit of that. So when we started talking, right, um, super interested about the company. And like you said, and, and our world was changing as it is still now, right, with we're all remote and hard to get in to see a doctor, especially counselors. Right. And I think that's a huge, huge issue nowadays. But yeah, and it, so it was really cool to talk to you guys and then this, understand the tech that you have underneath it. It was all, all con Docker and containers and everything. And, it, and so I thought it'd be a great to have you on the show and kind of highlight some of the features you're doing and some of the problems you're attacking and how it all boils down to getting everything in a container as a packaging system, right? And then you get all these great things with your with your platform. So yeah, I yeah. thought it'd be really cool to bring you on and and, and show a lot of that stuff, right? It's, it's really cool. And th there's gonna be more to come, I think too, so. Yeah, no, yeah. you got it. And of course, like the inherent nature of containers, uh, given that they're portable, just makes this, it really enables this technology. So Docker has been, it has been a catalyst in allowing MedSec to be the product that it is. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. awesome. Well, you ready, you ready to jump in? I'd love to see what you have for us today and we can do- Yeah, demo. for sure. Okay, awesome. That's I'm gonna good. say hello to some folks in the chat. Yes, Chris, we, it's now mandatory. You have to announce your country when you come into the, into the YouTube <laughs> channel. No, I'm just kidding, of course. But no, it is really cool to see where everybody's from. So it looks like Chris from South Africa. Let me pull him up. Thank you for, for joining again live. Chris comes a lot. Really appreciate it. We have folks from Morocco. Wow, and, that's amazing. And, and then my neighbors here in Mexico, just south of us. Awesome. All right. Well, let, you let me know when you got your screen ready and I'll, I'll pull you up. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh, I think things are good. Page zero good from go Croatia. Right. Awesome. Okay. Let me, there we go. You got the floor. Awesome. So I wanted to take a minute to just run through a little bit about what, uh, what our agenda is here. So the purpose of this demo is to show uh, how a developer might fix a cloud-based healthcare application that handles protected health information. Protected health information is, is information about patients that could identify them. And this app is running in uh, MedSAC Control. So uh, really quickly, uh, what is MedSAC Control? It's basically a turnkey solution to build compliant by design environments. And you can deploy your digital health applications built on Docker directly into these environments. 
that are operating within the boundaries of the of HIPAA compliance, uh, specifically around the security controls. So uh, we're going to quickly review and demonstrate an app that's running on MedStack. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, why MedStack control is, is used in, digital, in the digital health space and how building on MedStack control uh, requires Docker and all these other, uh, other pieces. And then we're going to do a real scenario of, uh, of building and deploying from uh, local dev into MedStack control. And that should about wrap us up with, uh, with the demo. Cool. Any questions on your end, Peter, before we dive in? No, that sounds great. Sounds great. Awesome. So th this is the MedSci Control dashboard. Uh, before we dive into this, I wanted to pull up an application that we have running on the uh, on this production URL. So this is particledemo.medsci.net. This is uh, you'll you'll be familiar with this, Peter. So Particle Health is uh, is an interoperability solution, and we had collaborated together to create this application. This is an example of something that could be running in a clinic where uh, a physician or a staff member would create a patient record that comes into the clinic and then they would pull up their information. And the information is actually from, from uh, an, EA, or an EMR or an EHR. And so I can uh, grab all this data about the patient, go ahead and download the records. And, uh, and when you get records, you end up getting them in this beautiful format where you can see uh, things like their uh, their labs, their lab results, or immunization summaries, or the continuity of care. And so th these aren't real people; these are just like uh, you know sample sample people in a sandbox environment. But uh, all this data is protected inside a MedSat control. It's completely encrypted in the entire process. And this is really the standard that which uh, healthcare organizations expect to handle their data. But that aside, it's not super important to understand uh, what the app does, but rather that it's running in these secure by design environments. Um, so we were able to build this on Docker and bring it into MedSat control in literally less than five minutes. And so I'll show you a little bit about how, how that's done. We'll go ahead and log in here. Awesome. Cool. So uh, at the surface, this feels a lot like any other developer platform where you would go in and you, know, you create a new cluster. A cluster is essentially like a region uh, that you would want to operate in and, and you would set a, a label for the environment like dev or staging or production. And then you start creating resources inside there. And so nodes are the, the bread and, and, and butter here that really power the Docker environment. So, the first node that you end up creating uh, ends up being the manager node, and you would specify just the CPU and the memory spec that you need. And then a pre-configured Docker environment spins up. All these networking rules are applied. The entire Docker environment is, is configured out of the gate. And all you have to do is bring your services in that end up running as, as containers here. So uh, teams are really choosing MedSat control because they don't want to, to allocate or they don't have the expertise to identify, configure, maintain, and respond to uh, compliance requirements uh, as, as they pertain to the stack. So if, if you and I had a business, Peter, and we, we created some EMR application and it was running on MedSat control, the infrastructure runs behind the scenes here. But we actually write uh, our policies in, a, in a, the same repos as we have with all of our other code. And so these are like, this is a, for example, our backup policy. And in MedSat control, you would get to open up our policies and uh, you get to inherit a subset of these, all the technical and administrative safeguards. So as a business, we would care about this because we get to take, say, for example, the backup policy build it into our own policies and say, oh yeah, this is how we handle backups without ever needing to build a backup system. If the backup system ever changes, it changes in our policy code and then directly in the product. And so it's kind of this seamless integration between uh, the policies, the actual thing that's running your environment, and then the policies uh, that you get to receive. And we answer uh, those like vendor security assessments and all these questionnaires that a hospital would ask of you or a clinic would ask of you. All of that is essentially automated into the platform. Awesome. Marcus, real quick. Yeah. 
so do you have do you have a we had a question from the from the chat do you have a community edition or or only paid version right now there's only a paid version of medsat control right now okay awesome yeah and then you're gonna love this one so who's responsible legally in case of a data breach for a developer's app deployed to MedStack? Interesting question, right? It, it, yeah, so I'll shut up and let you answer that. Yeah, it, it is a really interesting question. I think that the devil's in the details with it. So, I mean, MedStack is, is able to provide a set of policies that are attestations, and we can prove those attestations. They're essentially the things that MedStack is doing behind the scenes. Uh, how it relates to in the case of, of like a, a legal event or a breach, I think that it really comes down to the specifics as to what that nature is. Yeah. It'd be hard to comment on the hypothetical without knowing all the details of it. Yeah. And I would just like to say that I'm not a lawyer and this is not legal advice. All to do, I, I have a law dictionary somewhere on my shelf, but I don't know <laughs> what I'm talking about. So please seek uh, professional legal advice. I did awesome. that plus one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. Oh, you want to address this one real quick? Because I think I know the answer to this one, but um, before yeah. move on, I paused your your flow here. But um, I can't I can't see the screen, so just you know, oh, yeah. Throw so throw the questions on. Let's hear them. Okay, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So Chris was saying um, that the technology looks like swarm, 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 or is it K eights? That's, that's a great question. So the technology is indeed built upon Swarm. And I'm, I'm sure, Chris, you probably pulled that out by, by knowing the language as being like a manager node opposed to a master, which would be in Kubernetes. Curious, though, what, what kind of drove you to, to pull that out? Yeah, cool. OK. Yeah. So if we, uh, if we keep moving along here. Um, yeah. Let's dive in. I've got some show notes that I'm following too, but I mean, I've, yes. I've, I've done this demo like a thousand times. So <laughs> just ripping through the show notes here. Throw you off, throw you off, uh, off kilter here. Please, Sorry about that. Please do. Actually, so there's something really amazing that I wanted to talk about here too, if we're, if we're talking about in this space of compliance and all that. So MedSAC is and on theirs in order to provide this service. And so on the cloud providers, and we've done some research by mapping out the actual HIPAA control to this, the, the configuration, the guarantee that each stakeholder provides. And in our research there on the HIPAA security controls, the cloud provider only provides 3% of those as guarantees. And everything else needs to be managed and maintained and implemented by the, by the, the technical team. And so by running on MedStack control, we've taken a, a list of the, uh, the uh, technical and the uh, physical safeguards through a BAA that we can inherit through our cloud provider, pass it on through you, and cover 67% of those HIPAA security controls. So the remaining, the remaining one third or, or uh, 33% essentially comes down to like, you know, end application compliance things like having users have strong passwords and things like that. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so let's, uh, I mean, if we go back to, the, to this demo, let's identify and kind of go through uh, something that we want to fix and build a, a, in a live example. Awesome. So I'll open up the, the browser inspector here to show you kind of what's going on. So if we request a patient record, we see that there's this waterfall of requests coming in. And so this really isn't that performant. Um, you can imagine if we have tons more data, if we want to build upon this, it's not really going to do us a, a great job. And so what we've done is we've identified this issue and then we, uh, we built a, a fix. So we've taken a merge off from the main branch. We've implemented a fix and I'll, I'll kind of show you what that looks like here in a second. So we'll check out the main branch, which is what's running right now. And let's go ahead and check out the fix branch. And we'll look at the differences between uh, the fixed branch and main. And essentially it comes down to in main, we have all these async, uh, these async components here to all these different, uh, different pieces of information we're trying to grab from the patient. And in the fix, we've pulled out the async and, and basically put it at the top of the method. So we're delivering all the information in a single request. Pretty straightforward. 
Perfect. So from here, we ended up doing a Docker Compose build, build the fix. And uh, in building the fix, then we would uh, push it to, to our Docker Hub registry. So that would be Docker Compose push. And we're not going to push it because I don't want to overwrite what we already have there on the registry. But uh, we have the push of the fix. And then we re-tagged the fix to be uh, the latest. So a couple different methods as to how we have tagging on our production and our staging environments. Right. So if we go back into to MedSat control, this is where we're, we're hosting the, uh, the demo application container image. We have our production application, and that's running our main version, which has uh, the problem. And then we have our demo app staging uh, that's also running currently what's on prod. And so if we want to go ahead and push this update, Let's go into uh, Postman here for a second. We can check this out. So we'll go into uh, staging, and we can go ahead and, and see with our API the services that are running. And so for, for those of you who are on MedSat Control and tuned into this, uh, this would be probably the first time that you're seeing the MedSat Control API. And we're very excited to announce that live on the Docker uh, Docker Build podcast and live show that we're going to announce the launch of this API in preview, which awesome. Here, and, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we, we've got a fleet of people behind the scenes right now going launch, email, deploy. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. Apple-esque. <laughs> um, so let, let's go ahead and on our staging cluster, we'll see the body that we're going to send. We're basically going to just update staging with the latest tag. So I'll go ahead and you doing deploy that guy. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, cool. You did a little, uh, little post there, a little fetch? to your API? Exactly. So this is just a patch request. So it's going to just be overriding uh, in, in the existing service. We had uh, that the image was the main one. And so in our deploy to patch, uh, we're just changing it to update it to the latest. And so the latest being uh, this specific build, that's the same as our fix. Yeah, awesome. And so you could, you could wire that up into your CI CD pipeline. You got it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. So if we go over into MedSat control, let's uh, let's see what we've got here. So this is pretty awesome. We have some containers that were taken down, the main ones. And then we have our load balancer, which is running traffic. And then we have the latest that's going on uh, and, and spun up there. So our, our uh, URL for staging is uh, particledemo.quasgar.net. And so this should be the fix that we're expecting. And if we go ahead, let's inspect for the network again. We'll click into a patient record. Bang, everything comes in a single request. So pretty awesome. Ship it. Yeah, ship it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how we're going to do it. So we'll go back over into Postman, into our production, and we'll, uh, we'll deploy this specific fix, uh, which is the same as the latest. But we don't want to run latest in production. Uh, in this specific in in the specific demo, although it's the exact same, right? Great. Yeah, that's a little so, uh, real quick note on that, just for for all the mm -hmm. Docker folks out there with with tags. So tags are uh, mutable. So if you point a tag, uh, let's say latest or fixed, and it's pointing at an image, uh, a digest, a, a SHA, that you can have multiple tags pointing to that same image. And also underneath, you can update that tag with a different image, right? So that's one of the one of the things when you're building your Docker files for production, you should pin to a specific build, right? If you're using latest and uh, latest is getting updated underneath you, and you keep and you're pulling it down, right? Um, same with libraries or base images and those type of things. Um, things could get changed underneath you, and things could break. So. I always suggest one of the best practices is, is pin to a specific image, a specific SHA for a lot of your production uh, images. But anyways, sorry for a little yeah. little detour. No, that, 
that's such an awesome pointer and, and, and a really, really good point here too. So uh, we, we, what we have here is kind of a start, stop, deploy method uh, to roll out to make sure that users aren't being served uh, two, two different versions potentially of the same application. Uh, in this case, it's all should be all rolled out. We have the fix deployed. And just for some caching, I'll open up in a new incognito browser and we'll go to the, uh, the particle demo live. And what we expect here is again, the exact same thing where it would behave uh, similarly to the staging environment, which it does. Nice. So everything awesome. in a single request. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. So in, in a nutshell, that's essentially uh, our demo being able to, uh, to take a, 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 an application that's running on MESAC control, uh, be able to uh, pull down locally on your computer uh, the differences in the branches, be able to put, uh, to build it, then push it, you would tag it, and then uh, and then we can go ahead and pull that down and deploy it into the MedSat control environments. Awesome, awesome. And so folks, developers or engineers, right, if you know Docker and you know how to containerize things, seamless, seamless integration in the MedStack, right, you, you running in a container and not worrying about setting up your own K8s or your swarm cluster, and then wrapping all this security around that HIPAA compliance. And if anybody's on the show watching this, you know how tough that is way more than I, right? It's very difficult. So this is really cool. And I love that. I'm super excited because of that, that vehicle, right? That vehicle is your imaging container and running on uh, hub, sharing through hub down into the platforms. Pretty cool. Yeah. And so now kind of outside of the scope of that, like that academic flow of, of the demo, we can dive into a little bit lower level. And this is definitely more in your wheelhouse, Peter. So please, please drive in and ask as many questions as you want along the way here. But we have a, a Docker Compose file here that we use to build, and we are leveraging uh, secrets here. And so one of, the, one of the key points of MedSat control is to be able to configure uh, the secrets and the services, uh, the configs and volume mappings that you need uh, to run your, your Docker application locally directly on a MedSat control environment. And so if, if we go over back into uh, the Docker configuration here, we see that we have a couple secrets that we added in. And those are like our DB connection string, which is going to our encrypted Postgres database and also the key to the particle health API. So you can do a little bit of both running it uh, locally with just like something that's that's a file at your root path and then also uh, adding that into MedStack control and uh, deploying that as a Docker secret in Swarm. Nice, nice. Yeah, Compose is so powerful for, for local development. Just makes things super easy. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Some things that are kind of next step for us to help with that seamless integration, we're thinking about how we can uh, allow just like a seamless import of Docker Compose or even a Docker file directly into MedSat control, which helps make it even that much easier. Uh, there are some some edges that we need to smooth over around, you know, configurations in in Docker that can be uh, done in Docker file or in Docker Compose that we need to make sure that they're still within the compliance boundaries. But this is totally where we're going to make building on local dev and then putting it into your staging and production environments as seamless as possible from the Docker file that starts uh, on your on your uh, local dev machine. Oh yeah, that's that's super cool. Yeah, yeah, and it you know sometimes as engineers we we have a um, you know we want to make things complex, right? And we want to um, learn all the new technologies and use all 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 these wonderful things, right? And, and there are times to do that, but there's also the Kiss principle, you know, keep it simple, stupid, right? Until you yeah, yeah absolutely. And Compose is a, is a powerful um, open source spec, right? That, uh, you know, if you, if you guys, MedSack, want to be involved, be great. I can get you connected into it. And, you know, using extensions with Compose might be might be something you might be looking for. But, yeah. Yeah, that'd be outstanding. That's, yeah, perfect, perfect. So, so I know we talked. Okay. Sorry, I was going to cut you off and start asking a bunch of questions. Do you have anything else to show me? <laughs> No, th th this is pretty well. If I can uh, stop the screen share maybe and then uh, pull up our screen together or I can keep rolling with this and just I'll listen if we, if we want to yeah. still prod around here. Well, if we need to, we can jump back on. I'll bring it back up. Okay, but, uh, sounds, I think, sounds good. Yeah, awesome. We, we were talking a little bit in the beginning and I, I uh, you know, derailed your little bit of train of thought, but 
Yeah, so so it's using containers, but I think we were talking a little bit earlier off air that your pretty much your whole infrastructure, your whole platform is is run on Docker. And yeah. you, don't to, you don't go have to go in too detail. I won't I won't drill you with uh, a bunch of technical questions. But yeah, it'd be interesting just just to hear how you kind of how you guys use Docker and, and how that's all set up. For sure. So the actual MedStack dashboard, the the application that you use to interface and the API are completely separate from the Docker environments that get created and that you run your applications on. So we build and deploy our application both on staging and production using Docker. Uh, it's running on a Docker Swarm. And then all the environments or the clusters inside MedStack Control are on completely independent infrastructure, completely independent virtual networks, and a completely independent uh, Docker Swarm. And so it, it's pretty much Docker all in and out through the product from the actual uh, application itself through into the infrastructure and the applications that our users run. Yeah, that warms my heart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we didn't plan that, folks, by the way. Uh, anyways, yeah. That's, but it that's, makes sense. Like, do yeah, yeah, Docker Docker is a, an easy platform. It's supported by millions of developers. Uh, and really, at the end of the day, what we're looking for is a solution to be able to manage manage resources and have container applications, containerized apps running in an orchestrated environment reliably. And it checks all the boxes. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I'll put on my marketing hat and, 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 you know, talk a little bit about Docker. But that's that's why our focus has become a lot on developers using your inner loop is what we call it, you know, shifting left, running locally, running everything in Compose, and then being a great vehicle to be able to deploy your applications to anywhere, anywhere where you have a container platform to run. And it makes it nice for uh, folks like you guys that provide that production grade runtime. And the engineers don't have to worry about that as much, right? They worry about the things that bring value to their company. Right. Yeah. And using your leveraging your platform, if it's in a container and can, you know, you can scale it with that, then it's a win win for everybody. Right. So that's where Docker is really focusing on that, that spot, right, of really helping developers use containers, working locally, developing, and then seamlessly delivering that into the cloud, whether public or private or on a PaaS, right? A platform. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and so if I put on my, if I put on the product manager hat for a sec, and I think about how Docker is this this maintained and, and growing platform as well. We know that because it's so deeply nested that as Docker improves and as Docker's trajectory is going forward, so is MedStack control. So is the quality and integrity of all these environments running on it and the capabilities within. So it, it's really a win-win, which makes it just a, like a perfect fit to not only run the apps in that way, but also be here and talk about it. Yeah, perfect. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Um, and I, you know, a little softball question for you. I already know the answer, but I, I just want to make sure I cover it, right? We're not saying, MedStack isn't saying, hey, if you run on our, our platform, don't worry, compliance, we have you covered, right? Or, you know, how, how does that work? Yeah, so uh, compliance is, it is a, a total picture between three main things. Uh, one is the administrative compliance requirements. The other is the technical, and the third is physical. And so on MedStack Control, you'll get to inherit many of the technical and pretty much all the physical uh, requirements uh, to be you know, compliant within the, the, the scope of HIPAA. And so the rest, of, the rest of the pieces there are needed to be implemented by the team. And so if running on MedStack Control gets you over halfway there, right out of the gate, the rest of the things are like, oh, you know, run, run a malware system on your dev machines uh, or any, any machine that could get possibly close to, to uh, protected health information. Or, you know, in the application, make sure that there's strong passwords or two-factor authentication there. And so the, the rest of those things still need to be implemented by dev teams. There is still some due diligence. And so part of the MedStack product is, is evolving to include this comprehensive uh, portfolio of all the all the compliance requirements, starting from the physical, moving through to technical, and the technical things that you could also implement into your application, and then the administrative stuff as well, like training and and uh, and systems uh, systems information and things like that. No, nice, nice, perfect, perfect. And um, you know what what kind of what kind of value cost savings are you seeing? You know, so again, jumping back to the way some engineers think, right? Is is um, 
I want to be able to control everything, right? And I, I need to tweak all the levers on, let's say, AWS or GCP to, to make sure I'm saving money and, and being cost effective. But yeah, what are you guys seeing price wise of, of building your own or, or you know, coming to MedStack and, and uh, the value that's provided there, right? Some savings. Yeah, it's a great question because there, there's so many levers here that equate to price. There's time, there's just raw cost of goods. Uh, there's like focus. Uh, when we think about it holistically, we've determined, especially early on in the research of MedStack before my days of being here uh, that our founders did, is that it costed about $100,000 a year in simply the legal aspect of being able to maintain compliance. And that's, wow. that's relating to maintaining the policies, uh, to ensuring that the dev teams are uh, able to prove the attestations and they have the right tooling that in place to do that. And it's all this seamlessly maintained loop. It, early on in the demo, I showed a, a screenshot of kind of like the policies, the product, and yeah. then uh, and then the code. And so th that's essentially what costs that kind of money to, to do that. And it needs to happen on a, an annual basis. Like if you're SOC 2 certified or high trust certified, which are these really high uh, attestations to, to the kind of security that you have in your product, uh, that happens on a yearly basis, essentially. And so the whole audit process and answering questionnaires and, and uh, you know marking up changes that happen, this is a huge time consumption. Um, it's also a lot of resource and expertise that is essentially passed through on the, on the platform. So we chalk that up at about 100, 100K a year for, for these systems. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, and then the, the actual raw cost of goods. So on MedSat Control, the way that that uh, our billing model works is it's essentially a SaaS. It's a SaaS fee to access the platform. And then we pass through the costs that are incurred on the cloud provider. And we have essentially like an active security layer that is all the the, the cost that goes into uh, maintaining and, and doing patching and, and systems work and things like that. Uh, but we're passing through the cloud cost. So if you were to run on uh, on AWS or GCP or Azure, and you get an invoice for you know 300 bucks, uh, that that component on the invoice is absolutely on your MedSack bill. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, man, I I really really appreciate you coming. This is really really awesome. Love to have you back again and just stay up to date with you guys and and see how you're using all the Docker uh, wonderful tool chain and frameworks. Uh, to help build MedStack, right? And if you're in the medical space, please go check out MedStack. Let me, um, well, tell me, tell everybody where they can find you if uh, they can harass you online and reach out to you if want to connect. <laughs> yeah, I, I harass uh, anybody, anybody. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. I've mindfully stayed away from the dark hole of Twitter. So I'm not, I mean, I, I have a, a Twitter handler, but you know, if this is the, the call to action to start getting active on Twitter, then so be it. Um, so you can at Marchucha on Twitter. We also have MedStack. MedStack is super active constantly. Uh, and it's basically at MedStack everywhere on Twitter, on LinkedIn, uh, you name it. And, the, and then you can find us on, on there and connect directly with us. There's the, there's yeah. the MedStack URL. I'll jump, I'll drop a lot of these, uh, links into the show description so you guys can have them. But, um, also too, let me, let me, uh, do my little Docker shout out, shout outs, but, um, of course, you can follow me on Twitter. Reach out to me. Um, love to love to connect and talk to folks. One of the best ways you can get uh, connected into the Docker community is uh, go to the URL you see on the screen. Join our Slack community. There, um, all of our engineers are in there. All of our captains are in there. They're very active, very responsive. It's a vibrant community. There's there's the community leaders and folks in the community that are that love to help out. So if you have Docker questions and you need help. That's one of the best places to go into uh, the Docker community, get plugged in. We have meetups all around the world. Um, we have an all a community all hands coming up. So check that out on the site. Um, some pretty cool stuff we're going to be talking about at the, the community all hands. And we're going to be we're going to be doing a um, using a platform with a little more social interaction. So I'm really excited about that. So that's to be cool. You know, all, everybody re being remote nowadays, uh, getting to physical meetups or to physical uh, conferences is tough. So you can't. Um, you know, you, you lose a little bit of that social side. So we're hoping to bring some of that back uh, starting soon. So yeah, I'd sign up for the uh, the community all hands would be great. But yeah, oh, and one more, I always have to do this because I, I, I really love this little shout out, but our Docker roadmap, go check it out. It's on GitHub, 
It's a public roadmap. It is our real roadmap. We do use that. The uh, product managers um, use that. It look at it all the time. The engineers are there, and you can join in the discussion, right? If you want a feature that you're not seeing in desktop or in the engine or in hub, go add it into uh, the roadmap. Search for if that feature is already there. Feature request is there. Comment it, upvote it, whatever. Um, but for sure, join in the conversation there. Um, we do read we do read those comments and do interact with the community a lot on uh, um, on the roadmap on GitHub. Yeah, but awesome, awesome. Looking gonna... looking at that roadmap, Peter. Uh, yeah. I, I got to say, as a product person looking in on the roadmap, I loved it when I discovered the the Docker roadmap to see how this is all done just on like a GitHub project. I'm like this is great, super clear, you know exactly what you can expect. And we've taken a, a lot of inspiration from that on our end as well, kind of moving forward. We're excited to to, to move forward, you know, with our yeah. product practices and like that way. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I'm, you know, I'm a little bit old school, right? So I'm like, oh, well, you know, go, you know, I guess going back to our initial conversation starting off, right? It's like, oh, well, don't we want to keep that private? Don't we want to, you know, polish everything first before we start talking about it? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, nowadays it's, it's better, you know, the earlier we're getting in front of our community and, you know, we have a lot of fans, right, that use Docker a lot day to day and they're great. They give great feedback. They're super honest with us, um, really help guide the, the product, right? So it's it's been wonderful. I'm, I'm really glad that, that we switched to move that public roadmap for sure, 100%. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we could talk to the cows come home about about that. But yeah, like get, getting, uh, getting your roadmap, uh, at least to some capacity, can, transparent. People are not... Uh, interested in copying and, and doing that. The devil is in the details as to how you execute and it comes down to your team. Yeah. And, and you know, all around, I'm sure the, the Docker develop the, do the core Docker team with captains and the community contributors are amazing. Uh, we're extremely blessed at MedSec to have an amazing team of developers uh, as well. And it's just, it's so awesome to have that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, I, I think, I think it's very important to, to, be open, right, and and to to get out there and talk to your community, right, because they they're the ones that pay you. So uh, I like that. I like getting paid, and um, we like serving <laughs> them. You know, so it's it's a win win, right? And there's nothing uh, nothing uh, fake to it. I mean, it's it's we're trying to be very sincere and, and opening up, and we do listen a hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, let me ask you this before we go, because I I was gonna say I'm gonna ask you. This. I love we have some we have some time here. Well, what, what are you excited in the space? You know, whether in whether it's in the tech space or if it's in technology with um, the medical space, right? The what would you call? It? What's the term? I, I should know this. Like med med tech. We'll just make it up. Yeah, we, we call it digital health. Digital the, health. Okay. Yeah, the, the digital health space. I like yeah. med tech. Yeah, we'll call it med tech. Sure, for for the sake of this, we're in med tech. Um, you can run your med tech apps on MedStack. <laughs> Um, yeah, what, yeah. About? what are you saying just just in just in general in the in the tech world oh my goodness i mean in this space i'm i'm so excited to see uh just the flurry of, of ipos that happen uh, for companies in the digital health space it's a really exciting time for companies to be able to generate a lot of capital and do a lot of amazing things uh, especially in in like the uh, the counselor and, and, uh, and mental health and wellness space, we just had a, a blog post where we uh, we announced like some of the and, and announced and applauded, of course, the the uh, customers that we have running on MedSec that are our mental health applications. It's so important right now in in the world of our uh, of the state of our world in this pandemic. Uh, to be able to be transparent and clear and honest uh, with yourself. And sometimes the counselor is the sounding board to be able to do that. I stand behind that 110%. It's one of those key drivers that drives me in doing, in, in doing excellent work at MedStack. Um, this is so exciting. You know, a company like MindBeacon is, is one that, that I really love. Uh, and they're, they're specifically like one who's IPO'd. Uh, others who are running on our platform, like Inkblot, just like really, really incredible company, allowing you to connect directly to uh, to counselors in a digital format, like right now. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah I 100% I, I agree. I, I gave a talk on um, burnout, right? And yeah, you know, even, even without the past year, right? Burnout is real. And it's tough, right? Especially if you're uh, working in a hard startup world and high pressures on you, right? I don't think we were built originally to 
to, you know, we were out uh, build, digging holes and looking for food a lot of time. We didn't have a lot of time just to, uh, in our brains a lot. Um, so yeah. it's a different world. And uh, yeah, I think it's super important to talk to people. Reach out if you need help, for sure. Don't don't stay silent. It's it's can be scary, hundred percent. Yeah, totally. But but be, you know, being behind in, in this space and really enabling those tools for being accessible, it's so amazing. It's so yeah. exciting. And uh, yeah, like in, in the industry in general, this is just scratching the surface of things that are being done. Uh, there, there's another company that's using ultra wide bands, uh, ultra wide band frequency to be able to detect a heart rate in patients that they're, they're literally laying down in the, in the bed. And when they're still, it works really, really well to have like constant vitals monitoring without being invasive and technology like that is ran by like a, a company, uh, Xander Cardian. And it's just so amazing to see these kinds of innovations in this space. Oh, that's super interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's finally my, the future that I've always, you know, saw in movies is coming. Right. I did. Yeah. <laughs> And, and this is a little bit less um, as important to the world. Well, maybe not, right? So I saw this gaming machine, uh, this gaming uh, jacket that you put on and it has an arm and it has a platform on the bottom, right? That moves, you can run and jump and you can bend and it's uh, virtual reality and you can oh purchase it gosh. and bring it into your home. And they show some pictures at the end, like this, this, this machine sitting in someone's bedroom or in the living room. And it was totally like, I thought of, um, Oh, I forget the name of the movie now, but um, Avatar, right? Like you get into a, a band, your Avatar. Oh, well. yeah. It's yeah. Like it's a little bit like that, but it, it looks really cool. It looks really cool. That yeah. is one to one, is it not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope we don't ever get there where we just, we just plug it in, in the morning and never leave our houses and just virtually go out into the world. It's a little strange to me. But or maybe, maybe that's already happened and we don't even know it. Marcus, we'll not, if, we'll if you were here, I. I would pinch you, make sure you're live. <laughs> <Real. laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I think too, with the pandemic, right? Virtual reality um, is just going to skyrocket, right? Especially with meetings and conferences. And, yeah. you know, I think it was a real wake up call to all of us, right? Like conferences are great and getting together personal face to face is, I mean, absolutely at the top of my list for sure. And I'm, I, I surprisingly consider myself an introvert, right? And I even see how important that is. And then being stuck at home, right? I think it, the virtuality we kind of can see, oh, this has a great place to fit into, you know, humanity right now to bring us a little bit closer, even though we could, we're remote. So I think, I think it's super interesting. I'd watch that space if anybody's interested in it for sure. hundred yeah. percent. And, and there's plenty of rumors going around, even like Apple coming out with a potential VR headset. And, you know, I had some hypotheses around this coming potentially where like, AR, VR is, is essentially the next interface that we have aside from phones. And what really is sold the deal, what, what spiked it for me was the fact that like on the Apple Watch, you have cellular now. And it's like, okay, well, why do yeah. you need cellular on your Apple Watch? You're pretty much always tethered like a, a cyborg, as Elon Musk would say, to your phone anyways. Um, but now they've added ultra wideband sensors into, uh, into the, the watches themselves used for proximity and bearing. And so... There's lots that they're doing with that, even already in the product. But yeah. in a future with like with VR and AR, like we're talking some minority report style things where like we could completely yeah. control virtual interfaces with our body movements, uh, either using cameras or sensors to support those motions. It, yeah, it's so cool. And it's it's going to be really awesome. Maybe one day on the Docker Build live show, you and I are going to be you know completely immersed in, in a VR world here. Yeah, that would be that would be too, totally cool for sure. Yeah. Well, awesome. We're we're at the end. Uh, come to uh, come to an end here. But thanks again so much for for coming on. I really appreciate it. Some really cool stuff. Again, check out MedStack if you're if you're in the space. And we will definitely have you on again, Marcus. I really really appreciate it. You have a great Thank week. You so much, All right. See you, everybody. Take care.